My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, he go, man in go. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, Walker Cup, which team are winning the championship this yeah, thanks for staying with us on this football field Monday edition of the Sportsmax Zone. The flames of the Issa Schoolboy football season continue to burn with excitement in both the Digicel Manning Cup and the Water Da Costa Cup, where plenty of teams are feeling the heat while others have succumbed to the flames of battle. Before we dive into an eventful weekend, we welcome Schoolboy football analyst Lejay Williams to the set. Um, Lejay, first of all, Lejay went to Campion College, by the way. Um, DJ, Campion College were leading Kingston College by two goals to nil in the first leg of the round of 16 tie and ended up losing that tie. What happened, DJ? Well, as unfortunate as it was, I would have loved to have seen that, that, that upset victory. But unfortunately, I just think that the team is so young. The, the, obvious that the legs really got to them. They, they couldn't outrun KC. They couldn't... They couldn't really, they just couldn't compete in the end. And I think after a while, the quality eventually told and KC got their deserved win. But it was nice to see Campion competing at the, the, the quote-unquote latter stages of the tournament. And hopefully if they Middle were... Middle stages. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry let's, let's just keep the conversation over here for teams that got out of the group, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was good to see Campion competing and hopefully they'll be able to hold on to a lot of those talented players that they have unlike last season and build on something and maybe push even further for next season. Yeah, that is unlikely. Not because, um, of course, they will leave to other schools in Jamaica, but they'll likely leave to schools overseas. All right, we'll begin with the urban area competition first, Lish, and have a look at those results from the quarterfinal round on Saturday. And the result that will stand out most, of course, is Jamaica College losing to Heidel by a goal to nil. You see that there at the bottom of your screen from Group 2, St. George's College had a 2 nil victory over Tivoli Gardens and then in group one Mona I understand dominated that game against Kingston College missed a penalty as well when they were 1-0 up and it ended 1-1 and St. Andrew Technical the favorites for the Manning Cup title again this season beating a stubborn St. Catherine High team by two goals to nil so those are the results coming out of the weekend weekend's matches this is how the table looks going into tomorrow's game of course just the uh, one round of matches the stats leading group one and three points mona and kingston college a point apiece st catherine yet to get off the mark and then in group two you will see st george's college and Heidel on three points. Jamaica College and Tivoli Gardens yet to get off the mark. And remember, only the top two teams will advance to the semi-finals of this competition. Um, Lejay, let's talk about that Jamaica College defeat to Heidel. How much did that surprise you, if any at all? I think it surprised me quite a, a bit, actually, because firstly, Jamaica College, apart from the, their loss against Tivoli, which, which was the first game of the season, but it wasn't really a loss. It you was mean in a, the boardroom. Yeah, was, <laughs> that, that, that loss came off of the field for them. But apart from that technicality loss, that's the first time that they've lost a game in the Manning Cup in over two years, I believe. So it would have been a shock to their system, their fan base, and the, the manner in which it happened, of course. But I think a lot of people were really high on Heidel at the start of the season, and then that tended to wane when Casey started pushing up in that group. But... I think Heidel still have a lot of quality players. They have a lot of qu players who play professionally, a lot of players who play in a national setup, one of which who scored the winning goal in Ronaldo Barrett, who I think is one of the best players in the competition period. So it, it's always good to see those players shining, and I think Jamaica College may have taken them for granted in the end. Yeah, just two things quickly. Barrett has played at the Premier League level yes, as he for Cavalier. Yeah, he has. Um, so, yeah, lots of quality there. But also, let's not forget that Heidel were docked three points for using ineligible players in their game against Kingston College and lost those points. But not only did they lose those points, 
but because of the fact that they were over the quota in terms of the number of transferred players they could use there are some of those players that they still cannot lose but i guess they've really put it together and that was a brilliant performance on saturday against jamaica college can jamaica college rebound can they get to the semi-finals we've seen them do it before but based on saturday's result how do you see that group two panning out yeah, <laughs> I, I think that Jamaica College will still get through because the game their, their games remaining St. George I think if it comes down to it that game's going to be quite brilliant actually this Friday but before that I, I think that they'll have to really button down the hatches when they play Tivoli and they'll have to come out and do a really dominant performance I think that they'll have to go much harder than they would have wanted to after the Heidel game I think that they would have wanted to rest going into that St. George's game to make sure that they get first spot in the group yeah. but they're going to have to pull out all the stops they are a winning team they, they know what it's like to win so I'd be extremely surprised if they don't get out of the group yeah. but there is still quality to trouble them in this group okay prediction guru let's go give me your two from group two and your two from group one two. after after one set of matches two from group two is still St. George's and Jamaica College mm. from so you don't think Heidel will get through no even I, after winning I, I, I don't think so. I'm not, I'm not quite fully sold as yet, especially the manner in which that they won. I'm not quite sure that's going to translate in the other games. All okay. right. I mean, you, you stop Jamaica College from scoring and you get a goal, but my analyst has a problem with the manner in which they did it. <laughs> and how about the other group? <laughs> um, say Andrew Technical for sure. And that second spot is up for guards. But I do think that Mona... I, I do think that these are at current the two best teams in the competition, say Andrew Technical and Mona. So those are the teams that I'm going with. But that's a very, very tight group. Okay. All right. Well, plenty on our plate now for the rural area competition. The Issa Water the Costa Cup, where the quarterfinalists have been decided with one notable omission. Let's have a look at the fixtures. Is that what we're looking at first? Yeah, we're looking at the groups and fixtures. So Group A, Clarendon College, Glenmuir, Manchester, and Christiana. Fixtures on Wednesday, Clarendon College versus Christiana. And in already a massive game, Glenmuir High will play Manchester High. And then Group B, BB Coke, they've been on fire. The only team that qualified before their last match on Saturday. Dintel Technical got through with a 2-1 win over William Nib. Cornwall College held the defending champions Clarendon College to a 1-0 draw. And Garver Masia, remember, champions a couple of seasons ago, they are going well. So BB Coke will open against Garver Masia and Dintel Technical will play Cornwall College. By the way, the one notable omission from the quarterfinal round, in my estimation, St. Elizabeth Technical technical who needed to be bottom of the table mile gully in their last game on saturday and it ended in a nil all draw now folks let me tell you a quick story i was at st elizabeth technical on wednesday for their game against clarendon college and at the end of that game when clarendon college won by a goal to nil i heard a number of the state supporters saying don't worry we'll catch you in the final <laughs> I wonder if it's the Ben Francis final, but I don't think Clarendon College will be in the Ben Francis final. So I, I, I'm sorry, Stets, that's a tough one. Um, but DJ, how do you think that the Costa Cup is shaping up? Because I think that a Costa Cup quarterfinal run might end up being even more exciting than the Manning Cup. What do you think? I actually agree with you. I think a lot of these teams are on, the, uh, on a similar level. It's a similar playing field for all of them. So I do think that we're going to see some really exciting games. Uh, I think especially in a group with Glenmuir and Manchester, we're going to be seeing that game on Sportsmax on Wednesday. Um, one of the best commentators in the world will be on that match as well. Donald, as Donald first doing that match. <laughs> I, I said one of. He, 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 he's there. So who's as the other one? Uh, you are not coming on the show and blowing your own trumpet. No, I, I'm one of the best analysts in the world. So who's the other coming? One of the best... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be a really good game. I think Glenmuir were my preseason pick to push Clarendon College the closest. They haven't been as free flowing as I would have expected them to be. But I do think this Manchester team with a lot of quality also, I think Dintil has a lot of quality individually also. So there are so BB Coke just pushing the barriers also. So so many quality teams. I'm really looking forward to it. And this is the most exciting time in schoolboy football, probably in all of football in Jamaica. So there's nothing to 
to really shirk at is something that we're all going to be looking forward to. Yeah, by the way, I think that Manchester High team is overrated. My good friend Dr. Carl Bruce may give me a call after this. Um, but yeah, I do think the Manchester team is overrated this season. I've seen better Manchester teams. And by the way, viewers, this guy you see here, he's an idiot. Don't worry. He's been trying to get a pay raise. Pity. He doesn't, he doesn't know that calling me one of the best commentators in the world. It's not going to help you, my friend. You're not getting it. Don't worry. Anyhow, stay locked in to, the sports, to Sports Max 2 this Tuesday to see a rematch of the season openers. Defending champions Jamaica College take on Tivoli Gardens, a match with heightened importance for JC now, the Action kicks off at 2.30 p.m. in Jamaica, 3.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. And that game will be followed by Red Hot San Andrew Technical High facing the purpose of North Street, Kingston College. The brave may fall and they definitely didn't yield against Mona. Let's take a break. We'll be back with Interactive. <laughs> Competition and never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm gonna score from far and them love with peaceful and the youth now.